Amen. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13 through 19. Lord gave me a word. I've got some promise for you. i got some hope for you. Or i got a whole bunch of words that are going one ear and out the other. It's all up to you. It's all up to you this morning. Amen. You glad to be here this morning? Say amen. amen. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Simon Peter answered and said, oh, Excuse me, I missed a whole line here. Verse 15. And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And... I'm sorry, my finger, my eyeballs are going crazy. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want to talk to you this morning, the keys to the gate. The keys to the gate. Let's pray. Lord, I need you this morning. I ask you to touch me, anoint me, O oh God. Give me a fire of the Holy Ghost within me for the power of the promise of which you told me to teach the people in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I am excited to know this. Whenever Jesus says, Whom do men say that I am? There was an answer. And then Jesus looked at them and said, Who do you say that I am? Hey, if the Lord came in here today, and looked at you and said, Who do you say that I am? We should all have the same answer. Thou art Christ. Thou art the filler of my void. Thou art the Messiah. Thou art everything to me. You're my answer to my question. You are the reason that I live. You are everything and everything and all and all. That's who you are. None of us should have some kind of sideways answer. We ought to look at him and say, You are God in the flesh, according to 1 Timothy 3.16, John 1 and 14. According to the word that you said, I and my Father are one, John 10 and 30. You should be able to look at him eyeball to eyeball and say, You're my Lord and my God. Amen. You know, you can go ask somebody down the street, say, Who is Jesus? Well, you know, back then there was a bunch of people that was prophets and he was a great teacher and a great man and he was a this and he was a that. It's okay that they don't understand. That's our job to help them understand. Amen. But whom do you say that I am? You see, we've got to have a relationship with the Almighty in order to know what He can do. You see, why is it that when I used to evangelize, I would teach on the oneness of God and the power and who He was in the name of God, and it didn't have anything, you know, all the, and all of a sudden people get lined up, and all, I blind eyes open, the Alzheimer's gone, deaf ears unstopped, legs growing, all kind of weird stuff happening. Why? Because people knew who He was. You see, there's something that happens when you begin to know who Jesus is. This world is looking at you and saying, Who is Jesus? I love historical things. I love all kind of weird, uh, not weird, but, but questions of, of philosophy, questions of theology, questions of science. I love all of that. And uh, in and around Easter, for uh, between now and the time of, of, of Pentecost Sunday, uh, it, there's going to be, there's all kind of, National Geographic's got every Jesus story there is. I love hearing them. I like, it's neat. It's cool. I, I enjoy listening to it. But the problem is, Sister Hodges, nobody knows who Jesus is. You can learn that Bible from cover to cover, stand up and quote every scripture in there and miss God. I believe in, how many of y'all helped your kids learn their memory verse this week? Raise your hand. All right, got a couple. Okay, amen. That, that's what we got to work on. Hide the word in the heart. But it's not about learning the memory verse. 
Can I tell you what? Jesus existed before the printing press and He will exist after it. Jesus existed before the written language and He will exist after it. He says, if you seek for Me with all your heart, and that day you shall find Me. You know, the Lord knows how to show up. So I don't care. I really would like for you to be able to quote every scripture. John 1 and 1. Uh, Genesis 1 and 1. Uh, Acts 2.38. John 2 and 4. Uh, every scripture you can think of, I'd like for you to be able to quote them all. But I tell you what, I would more so like for you to know who Jesus is. I'm talking about a key to a gate this morning. You see the understanding of the gate. Do you understand how to get through the prison bars that hold us back and to get through the place that we're in? We've got to have an understanding that the answer is Jesus Christ. No other answer. I'm not an answer for my own life. I don't have anything. All I have is Jesus. A lot of people say, well, y'all Jesus only. No, we're Jesus everything. I'm Jesus everything. Sun don't come up without Jesus. Amen? Sun don't set without Jesus. It don't rain without Jesus. My check won't be cashed without Jesus. My truck don't run without Jesus. Nothing without Jesus. And brother, don't you understand that Jesus had nothing to do with the creation of Ford Motor Company? Yes, I do. That's why I drive a Dodge. <laughs> but... You know, I know, that's why we pray for you, heart. No, I'm joking. <laughs> hey, mine held up good for me too. I just have a good time with it, okay? And if you like Fords, you can get to heaven driving a Ford. It just be a little difficult. But, uh, <laughs> and if you drive a Yugo, you got the same problem. Cause, no, I'm joking. I better stop while I'm ahead because <laughs> I'll get on your car in a minute and it won't just be Sister Vickers on my case. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you can get to heaven. Brother, don't you understand the, what science is? And You know, I, I like it. When they moved in the, in, the, in, the, in the medieval times and they were burning all of these witches. And, and if you study it out, most of these witches were uh, holistic doctors. Today, they, you know, they have the health food stores and the, this and the that. That's what they were. Uh, nine, you know... Yeah, they probably talked about some kind of donkey that they, you know, got a feather from the tail of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a dragon or some nonsense like that. But it was just some little stupid thing that they figured out that if you put this little rub on you and it made it <laughs> mystical and it, if you keep, it would keep you coming to buy them from them. You realize that? I mean, they just talk about, you know, this is, they find out that, uh, you know, some, some shell of a dragon or whatever was actually some root of some plant somewhere that they had ground up and they figured out and they just told everybody it was a dragon egg and, and people believed that and the only place to get that was from the guy that had the power of the dragon and, and, if you, and it was a bunch of junk. They do the same thing today, you know. People like me, we, we kind of uh, uh, work on your computers and we don't want to tell you it's so simple. It's just like, you know, one, two, three, four, it's all done, goodbye. So we make it like really big and drawn out and it makes you coming back and you're scared to work on it yourself. <laughs> but when they, when, they, when they went from that over into quote-unquote modern medicine, okay, which is the same thing, they began to put up a way out. And begin to say, well, superstitions was an old way, but science is a provable way. And truthfully, science is a provable thing. You know, right now, I really like the fact that they have double-blind studies on pills and drugs. I don't take none of them, but that's, I'm glad they do. Because that way they can say, well, uh, X, Y, and Z is a stable factor. I can, re I can reproduce the results. Science is a provable thing. But let me just, Brother Dunn, don't you understand? Science is not superstition of God. And, 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 and we've got to understand and get out of all those old ways. I'm trying to tell somebody that the key to your answer is Jesus. Because science cannot exist without because in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and all that is therein. And the Bible says all of these things serve Him and are obedient unto Him. And if the Lord wants to snap His finger, yellow suddenly will become purple. I don't know why it would. But if He wanted to, it could. 
If he wanted to say up was down and down was up, guess what immediately would happen? Why? Because it, we live on his time frame. We, you know, there's 24 hours in a day, and from Genesis 1 and 1, there was 24 hours in a day. He set the earth spinning. He set everything the way it was. And God is God and God alone. And He is the only answer to your salvation. He is the only answer to your torment. He is the only answer to your finances. He is the only answer to anything in your life. He is the only answer. We got to understand that there are gates that keeps us bound. There are things that keeps us in a prison. And if we don't recognize that the key to the gate is Jesus and Jesus alone, we will be bound forevermore. Let me get back on my lesson. Genesis chapter 3. You don't have to turn there, but we see that, you know, here's Adam and Steve. I mean, Adam and Eve. That was the other creator. <laughs> There was Adam and Eve, and they were in the garden. And along came a slithering little serpent, Satan. And he did something really unique. He said, If you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will be like gods. Now, the Bible said that they were man and female, and they were naked, and they were not ashamed. I love that. We use that uh, uh, Friday, the wedding. Because there was no fear of the past. They had no past. They were just created. There was no fear of their future. There was no fear of thought. You know, a husband and wife, that, that ought to be the way it is in your home. Brother Roger, you ought to be able to come home and come up with some wacky, dumb, stupid idea. Tell her all about it. And she goes, oh, wow, my husband is the smart. And no, I mean, you know, you, no fear of, of sharing those things. So, she, Teresa, when you burn the biscuits, you no shame. I'm not ashamed of that. He's like, that's okay, darling. I can scrape it to the shade. I like it. <laughs> Hello? You know, I, I, that's the way it should be in your home. And I know it is. In all of the homes in this church, that's parents and children, there's no, there's no, they're, they're not ashamed. One, I, I, husband, no, I know everybody in this church, your home's like that, right? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm saying that by faith. <laughs> but, but you see, what happened, Brother Noah, is they traded that oblivious. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> They traded the oblivious bliss of not having fear, not having shame, not having any pitfalls to fall in, not having any curse, nothing of the sort. They traded all of that for the knowledge of good and evil. And from the moment that they took on the knowledge of good and evil, they had fear, they had problems, they had discontentment, they had overcoming. Everything was upside down when they entered into the knowledge of good and evil. Now, I... We, 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 you know, the great thing about being an employee, has anybody here ever been an employee, not a boss, and then you moved up to being a boss, and then you went back to being an employee? Anybody? Okay, isn't it cool whenever you went back into a realm of like, dude, I just show up at 8 o'clock, I work till 5, I go home? You know, as a business owner, for years... You know, when you own a business, you can choose when you work, all day and all night, or not at all. If you go to the night at all, there's no money. You, you own a restaurant, you're there from 5 in the morning until midnight, and you start it all over again the next day. I don't care what you do. If you, but you've got the burden of the, 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 the stress, you've got all of that. You see, life is like that when we have entered into the knowledge of good and evil. When we've entered into the realm like at, that Adam and Eve put us in, every one of us, if you look around, guess what? There's no one here that has not been in that situation and not bound by our flesh. Our flesh takes us there. Adam and Eve sold us into a slavery to Satan. And they gave away the freedom and the bliss of this creation. You see, God told them, said, I'm going to give you dominion over everything, the plants and the animals and the fish and the sea and the fowl of the air. I'm going to give you dominion over all things. And all you've got to do is get up in the morning and dress the garden and, and whistle whatever or Dixie or whatever song you want to whistle in the afternoon. And I'm going to show up and I'm going to dwell with you. And you will not have any fear to approach me because you're in bliss. How many of y'all know how hard it is sometimes to approach God? 
A lot of times we deceive ourselves and we approach God in our own conceit, in our own understanding, in our own power. But guess what? That's not the key to the gate. You see, whom do men say that I am? Whenever you get a revelation of Jesus Christ, you can approach Him. We can come boldly before the throne of grace. You see, Jesus Christ has made a way for us and has determined to make a way. And He said, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom that will get you out of the box that Satan has put you in all the way back from Adam and Eve. Jesus goes through His temptation. Watch this. I like this. This is good stuff. Jesus is fasting and Satan comes and begins to tempt him. And he says, turn that stone into bread. Jesus is like, you don't understand. Feeding me doesn't accomplish his goal. That's hard to do. It's hard to do. Man, this dude's hungry. Forty days, been fasting. And he says, it doesn't accomplish his goal. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh out of the mouth of God. I am going to transfer the hunger of my body and feed the spirit, feed the body by the spirit. You see, too many times we get to where we want to feed the flesh by the flesh because that's what makes common sense to us, but that's because we're in prison. You see, if you can get to the point where you can feed your need of your flesh by your relationship in the spirit, you will flourish and Satan will be quenched. That doesn't make sense. Okay, let me help you out. What did we talk about with our young people? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 16, 33. And His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What was it? Lands, husbands, wives, dogs, cats, motorcycles, whatever it was. These things I know that the Gentiles seek after, and these things I know that you have need of. Jesus knows you have need of all the same things. He knows you need an air conditioner in your apartment. He knows you need a, a hot water coming out of the water tap. He knows you have need of these things. But if you'll seek Him first, He wasn't talking about some kind of uh, uh, weird off-the-wall kind of thing. Whoa. The Lord knows you have need of, of spiritual enlightenment, so seek God first. He was not talking about that. He was talking about in the flesh. But the problem is, is the flesh was bound. Because in order to take care of the things of the flesh, we think we've got to turn the stone into, into bread. We think we, we, if we have a way out, we think we see it by the flesh, and so thereby we grab it by the flesh, and we do not enlighten ourselves by the Spirit, so we're still hungry. You see, there's nothing that you have need of that God cannot supply. If you can put your faith in Him and you can put your eyes on Him and recognize that He is the Christ, you look up the definition of the word Christ and you find out that He is the filler of the holla. I know holla is a, is a word from back in our part of the country. We, I, we got caverns around here and we got holes in the ground and, and emptiness and void. But He is the filler of the void. I have void in my life. The only way to get it filled is Jesus. No bread will fill it. No water will fill it. Only Jesus can fill it. I know that's deep. Watch this. If thou be son of God, cast thyself down, and he shall give the angels charge concerning thee. They're going to keep you from even dashing your foot against a stone. Tempt God, in other words. Tempt God. Now, the Lord does something for you. Don't even worry about it. Just walk. Live your life. Abraham? Abraham. 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 Sarah. <laughs> Leave everything that you know and go where there's no Walmarts and wander around. They weren't tempting God to obey God. God said, walk. They walked. Wherever you put your foot, I'm going to give it to you. All that, They weren't tempting God to do it. I, I love this. I get in trouble about this stuff all the time. And it's usually aimed at me. But and I pray for, you know, a little sick kid. And they got heart murmurs. I said, you know, if God healed them, there's no more need to, to follow off after the law of the heart murmur. Well done, that's tempting God. Wait a minute. How is that tempting God? Let me back up and do it like this. Lord raised you from the dead. Don't live freely. God opened your eyes. You were blind. You can now see. But don't look. Close them about eight hours a day so you don't tempt God. That don't make no sense. If 
God healed that child, God healed that child. God done it. You see, it's not tempting God to stand on His promises. The Lord said, I forgave you of all your sins. I got forgiven, brother. I'm not going to walk around with my head held down from something God forgave me for. I have been set free. He is the key to the gate of my torture. He is the deliverance of my shame. He is the one that turned away my problems. He set me free and put my feet on the solid rock. It's not tempting God to do what He told me to do. But God didn't tell Jesus to step out. You know, it's like, uh, I hear this a lot. Well, God says supply all my needs, so let me go buy me a new truck. <laughs> God, you know, God can. And He might just do that for you, but you better be careful. Amen? But I like this third part. Watch this. The devil taketh them up into a high, exceeding high mountain, and showeth them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Such a vigorous, the, the, the Lord been dealing with about three days on this. And I like this. He showed Jesus all of the kingdoms of the world. Just poof, and telescope or something. I don't know how they... Maybe he had CNN back there and he just saw it all. I don't know. But he showed it all to him, Sister be Hill. And he said, If you'll bow down and worship me, I will give it all to thee. Now, I've heard too many people say that the devil's a liar and it wasn't his to give. I beg to differ with you because it was his at that time. Because Adam and Eve had sold it all to him. But Sister Graham, you know what he did? He said, wait a minute. He said, I know the key to taking it myself. I know the way to get it without it being tied to your crooked tail. Sister V. Hill, he said, I know if I can live sinless. I know that if I can walk the walk, talk the talk, shoot right, spit white, do everything right, I know when it's all said and done, I will be Lord of lords and King of kings. And devil, you will be nothing. You see, too many times the devil shows us all the kingdoms and says, if you'll follow me. Reject that which is right. Reject that which is good. Reject that which is true. And do it my way. I will give you what you want. Oh, it's so easy. All you got to do is say yes. All you got to do is just, just turn your back on what's delivered. Turn your back on the key of the kingdom. Turn your back on and go your own way that the enemy has laid out for you. And there is no cost. But you're in debt. You're still in bondage. Bless God, i got everything I want, but you're in bondage. Well, I, I, I'm tired of fighting, Brother Dunn, and I'm, I'm tired of that. And, and this was just so easy to go this way, but you're in bondage. You see, Jesus would like to set you free. Whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. You never have to look back. Whenever you have the key to the prison bars and you go through with Jesus Christ, you never have to worry. You never have to look back. You never have to hang your head because you have been changed. But until we are changed, let's watch this. Jeremiah 48 <coughs> says this. I'm going to throw that up on the scriptures. Jeremiah 48, 42. I'm going to read this off the board today. I, the, the, I'm going to preach more on this sometime soon, but this is powerful. And Moab shall be destroyed from being a people because he hath magnified himself, lifted up his flesh above what was right, didn't serve God, didn't obey God, wasn't walking with God, and was turning himself up and turning God down. Again, he magnified himself against the Lord, verse 43, for fear and the pit and the snare shall be upon thee, O inhabitants of Moab, saith the Lord. He that fleeth from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that getteth out of the pit shall be taken in the snare, for I will bring upon it, even upon Moab, the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. You see, the Lord has got an attitude against people that try to get out of their prison without Him. And Satan has a problem with it as well. The Bible says that Satan has to obey God and does what God says for the pleasure of the Lord. You see, the Lord, Satan has sinned and has caused mankind to sin and has caused me and you and everybody else sitting around here to sin. And what Satan will try to do is will, it, it, he, God will use him and the things of his kingdom 
to bring upon a greater damnation upon us when we turn our back on God and try to magnify ourselves and lift us up out of our own problems. You can't get out of your trouble with your problems. You can't get out of your... The only way out, the only key to the prison is Jesus Christ. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Upon this rock I'm going to build my church and I will give you the keys to the kingdom. What did Jesus do? He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave and He put it in the hands of the Apostle Peter and He said, Now go forth and preach the gospel to all men of every nation. I'm telling you this morning that God has a key of deliverance. I don't care what your problem is. I don't care what your mental cell is. I'm telling you this morning that Jesus Christ is the answer. So, I know that's deep. But it's, it is. Because we all... Well, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. I, me and Jesus. Oh... And you look at their life and you see them in prison bars and, and you scratch your head and say, I thought Jesus was alive in your life. You know, I, I always love Brother, Brother Russell Clemens, my, my, my son in the gospel, my little brother. Six foot seven, scare you to death if he got mad at you. <laughs> you know, he, he's like one of these guys who could look at most of us and go, thunk, and we just drop down on the ground like a whack-a-mole. <laughs> you know, he walked around after he got the Holy Ghost. And everybody's like, what's up with Russell? <coughs> he was redeemed. There's something different about him. His songs changed. His attitudes changed. He loves people. His mama said, I knew Russell never acted like this. He's so sweet now. <laughs> I mean, only a mother could say it like that. <laughs> How? The Holy Ghost has set him free. You see, the bitterness and strife and envy and, and garbage gets in your mind because you've been bound by sin and problems and you're in a prison cell of life and you haven't got Jesus to get you out yet. Thou art the answer. Thou art Christ. Thou art the filler of my void. If we're not careful, fear. Brother, I can get you, you know, a good psychiatrist can get you over your fear. You're afraid of snakes. They'll throw a rubber snake at you and they'll do this until you get over snakes. But look at what he says. When you get over fear, the pit. The pit. You're going to fall in the pit. And should you by some way, somehow, some manner, get yourself out of the pit, you will be taken in the snare. You see, some of us have gone through the fear and some of us has gone through the pit and we think we're on top all by might and by power and by strength and by our way. But Jesus Christ said there's one more. And if you have overcome the other two, you will fall to this because I'm going to give you a year of visitation. And there's a snare. What's a snare? You may ever look at a, 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 a mousetrap. That's a snare. It's got something juicy in there that you really, really want. It's got the exact answer to all of your dreams and all of your everything. There it is. Oh, what a beautiful thing. And you stick your hand in and BAM! I mean, just think about that big old, you know, gorilla bear, whatever he was. You know, grizzly bear. Not gorilla bear. <laughs> I mean, it was just so tempting. to, oh! And it's all over. You see, that's where we're at. But I'm telling you this morning that I don't care if you're in the fear or if you're in the pit or if you're in the snare. You've got an answer and His name is Jesus Christ. You've got an answer and it's called being born again. Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, what must I do? He said, son, you must be born again. He didn't say, what must I do? He said, I've got an answer for you. You ain't asked no question yet. You don't know what you even want. All you know is you came to my door and said, thou art a teacher come from God for no man can do the things that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered him and said, you must be born again. What was it? I know that you don't recognize the power and the presence of God. If you would have recognized the power and the presence of God, you would not have been in such awe at a man walking around showing the power and the presence because it should have been everywhere. 
And because you were in such awe, because this was unique to you, because you didn't understand it, I know the answer to your snare. I know the answer to your deception. The answer is you must be born again of water and of spirit or you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because you're bound by sin. You're bound by the prison bars of hell. But if you can get born again of Jesus' name, washed in the blood, take that key of the Holy Ghost salvation, stick it in the lock of hell's gates and march right out with your head up and your power upon you in the authority of heaven. There's a key. Sorry, I'm kind of excited here. John 4, 20. You don't have to turn there, just the woman at the well. Well, Jesus. Golly. We, we worship in this mountain. This is the way we're saved. Well, we all serve the same God, don't we? This is how we do things. Here in Salt Lake City, this is the way we do things. Or here in Mumbai, or here in, in Saudi Arabia, or here or wherever, this is the way we do things. I'm in Tibet, and this is the way we serve God. We all serve the same Jesus. But you say over there at Calvary Apostolic Church is the place you need to be. Jesus looked at her and said, you serve, you know not what. We know who we serve. You know, before he got on to the next part that he that worship God must worship Him in spirit and truth, he laid the ground rules and he explained to her, we know what we serve. You serve, you know not what. Jesus said, then what you're doing in this mountain, you don't have a clue what you're doing. Why? Because you're doing it by your sight and by your might and by your understanding. You're not doing it by the way of the Lord. The Lord said, and there will be a place for where I shall put my name and there shall you serve me and in no other place shall you offer sacrifices of praise but in my house. That's what he told him. But you see, Pastor... <coughs> This is such a lovely place and Jerusalem is way over there. Look, they've got... <coughs> Brother Dunn, you don't understand, they've got nice pews at that church. And they've got a good audio and video thing. And they've got smoke that comes out on the pulpit while the preacher's preaching for effect. And there's lights and colors and smokes and mirrors and all kind of stuff. And they've got games and they've got slides and they've got clowns and puppets. And Brother Dunn, that's... But we just... It didn't get the lady at the well out and it ain't going to get you out. Can you say that again? It didn't get the lady at the well out and it ain't going to get you out. I'm going to tell you what to get you out. Here, O Lord, the Lord our God is one Lord. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and your children, and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's what will get you out. Jesus said, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. And the key is that whosoever seeketh God with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength shall find him and can be redeemed of him and can be blood bought, baptized, in Jesus' name. Change your whole outlook. Amen. You don't have to give in to hell to get what you want. You can obey God and let God bring it to pass. Psalm chapter 37 and verse 4. Delight thyself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of thine heart. But, wait, 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 don't stop there. Trust also in Him. Commit thy way to the Lord. Trust also in Him. And He, not you. When you bring it to pass, it's not through a key of Jesus Christ. It's by you. He shall bring it to pass. And what He has created, no devil in hell can do anything against. No Satan can speak against. When Jesus has forgiven you of all of your sins, ain't no devil can come up against you and condemn you and can cause you to sin and can cause you to come upside down. Why? Because Jesus Christ said, I have forgiven you. And you can hold your head up high and throw your hands in the hair with victory like you had just went 15 rounds. You've got victory. Why? Because Jesus Christ died for you. There is a key to the gate of your prison. I heard a story. I don't know if it's true or not. I really But supposedly, supposedly, and if somebody proves me wrong, I'm not trying to be right here. I'm, it, it's take the point as it is, okay? I'm not making this up either. I did hear it. 
Just like this. And I hadn't heard whether it's true or not. Because I don't think anybody here is old enough to have been there. Houdini was trying to escape and he had all these challenges out there. This one place said, I challenge you, you can't break out of this jail cell. And they put him in handcuffs and a straight jacket and thumb locks and all this other stuff. And just a, just a matter of moments, man, he had all that stuff out and he was loose inside the jail cell and he began to pick the lock on the door. And he tried 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 and tried and tried and tried and tried. Never could get out. So finally he gave up. Now I don't know if this is true. Finally he gave up. And when he gave up, he found out that it had been unlocked the whole time. <laughs> you see, when Jesus died for your sins, it's just like that. You just have to ask the man that knows how to control the knob to give you instruction. Jesus Christ has got a way. It's, he's already paid the price. He's already died for sin. All the sins in your life, there's no need to have shame with it. There's no need to have condemnation with it. But you've got to get a hold of the man that's got the answer. His name is Jesus. He's given instruction of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. He's given a path to righteousness and holiness and truth. And whenever you get your hand on the key, you'll find out that it is open and unlocked and all the way. But there's no jimmy of the lock. You might think you get out. Bless God, i got him handcuffs. You ain't out of the jail cell. Get out of the straight jacket. You're still behind bars. What was it when they wanted to lock Paul up? They said they put him in the inward parts. Put him in the most secure places. I like it. Peter laying there. He's sitting there. Ha I, I, I know I've said this before, but maybe somebody will get it this morning. Jesus told Peter in the book of John, He says, When you're old, someone else will gird thee and lead thee about. A few days after the resurrection of Christ, uh, months, years, whatever it was, wasn't long. He's still kind of a young guy, I think. But here's Peter, going to be executed in the morning. Any, anybody in here ever been threatened, your life threatened? You know, it's not a good feeling. You know, you get a, you get a 45 stuck right here. I know what it's like. And it's just, you're, you're just seconds away from somebody being stupid to pull a trigger. Well, Herod had that 45 right there on the side of his head. He said, in the morning, Peter, you and me, I've got an axe going to take your head off your shoulders, and it's all over and done with. And the Bible says, I, I don't know about y'all, it just maybe, you know, maybe this is me, but the Bible says Peter was asleep. Mm -hmm. Brother Roger, God's got promise for you. I know there's all kind of stuff and, and walls and, and prison bars, but when Jesus has said, I'm going to do a thing in your life, you can rest assured it's going to be done. No need to stress about it. No need to allow the bars to come back and bind you because Jesus is the key to it. He says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to help. I'm going to give you peace. I'm going to give you joy. I'm going to supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Start seeking the kingdom. Amen. Here's Peter, chained between two guards. I imagine that, 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 that what's the executioner was sharpening his blade all night, worried about chopping the head off a preacher and stuff like that. Preacher sound asleep. I ain't worried about it. Jesus, Jesus said when I'm old. Angel showed up. Hey, Pete. Let's go. Huh? Chains fall off his wrist. Peter didn't pick the locks. Chains fell off his wrist. Bible says that he walked out of the jail. Sister Mary, he walked all the way outside. And when he walked out, the wind hit him in the face, and then he realized, wait a minute, it's not, this is, this is real. Wow. You see, that's the way God will bring you out. Your problems, your confusion, your murkiness, your despair, you cannot negotiate and get yourself out. But when you put your hand in the hand of the Master who has said, I have defeated death, hell, and the grave. I have overcome sin. I have overcome confusion. I have overcome any problem that you may ever face. If you will trust in me, be born again of water and of spirit, that is the key. That is the answer. I've got the Holy Ghost. I don't have to worry about anything else. I've been saved. I don't have to worry about anything else. I'm going to get up in the morning and everything's going to be all right. Everything. right. I'm going to tell you what. You know, brother, I, 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 there, there are situations... You, you, may, you, you may not... Sister Sarah, you may, you may not like some of them kids in your Sunday school class. 
Some of them may be honoring. Don't point them out. <laughs> Trust God. <coughs> sister Shammy, I only pick at you because you got a whole slew of them. I can pick a sister, but she's got more, but that's okay. Sometimes that one, you know which one I'm talking about, right? <laughs> it's just like, oh no, shame comes on. You know, Jesus Christ doesn't have that. Jesus Christ, yeah, if there's a reason your kids can't be just as glorious as the next one, every last one of them, they're wonderful! Well, we'll take this one and this one and that one, but not that one, not that one, we'll take that one. Uh uh, that ain't the way Jesus works. Jesus says, whosoever will. Jesus is not sitting there picking which one He likes of you the better. Jesus Christ loves every last one of you the same. Jesus would never put you away. Jesus would never hide you from somebody because you're ashamed of you. Jesus would never... Why? Because whenever you get plugged into Jesus Christ, there is therefore no condemnation in Christ Jesus. There is therefore no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Ain't nobody ever going to say that ain't going to work in my house. I'm telling you right now, you're welcome in the house of God. Jesus Christ will wash away all of your sins. When the devil says you ought not go because it won't work for you, I tell you the devil's a liar and the father of it. Well, you shouldn't bring your kids to God. No, you need to bring them. That's where they suffer the little children to come into me. Jesus Christ saying, why aren't your kids here more? Sorry, I'm, I'm, kids are in here and i got to think about kids a little bit. Watch this. Almost finished. John 14 and 30. Hereafter I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh. This is, we've got to, if we can get this. We need to get this in our gourd. When we are part of Jesus, when you're born again, Jesus says you can't enter the kingdom of God without the Holy Ghost. When you're born again, you've got His Spirit on the inside of you. You become Him. You become just like Jesus said, I and my Father are one. You have Him on the inside. He has paid for your debt. More than just forgiven you, He has created a new you. How many of y'all know? I, I, I know a lot of uh, people don't like that either. Unfortunately, they... The reason, it's not that they don't like it. But there's a lot of apostolic preachers that don't confess that there's something that happens at repentance. When the old saying, Sister B. Hill, a lot of churches say, we're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Spirit. Problem is, too many people stopped at the saved part. Because when you repent of all of your sins, theoretically, at that very moment, for a moment in time, all sins are washed away. You have nothing that the enemy, Satan, can charge you with, just like Christ. He had nothing. The prince of this world cometh and findeth nothing in me. For a split. Now, how many of y'all have lived about an hour without sin? <laughs> See, this is the problem. This is the reason you need to get. Filled with the Spirit. This is why you need the Holy Ghost to be born again. This is why you can't see heaven without it. Jesus said it, not me. Because we are full of deception and sin. Watch this scripture. Where's my other note? Throw up 1 Peter. 2 Peter, sorry. 2.22. This is why we need the Holy Ghost. This is why we need to be careful. But... It is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog. Everybody say, I'm a dog. dog, dog. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. If you're trying to get out of your prison without Jesus, you'll be that. Can I say it again, Sister Mary? If Jesus is not the one that delivered you, you better be tied into Alcoholics Anonymous and confess that you're an alcoholic for the rest of your life because if not, you're on your way to doing it again. The Lord has delivered me from all kind of stuff. You know, Brother Carlos, it's between me and you, don't tell them. God delivered me from a girlfriend... I'm thankful that he did. I don't want to be that though. For whom Jesus has set free is free indeed. You see, when he set me free from my sin, when he set me free from my, my stupidity, when he set me free from my addictions, when he set me, I am going to hold on to Jesus Christ. He is the key to my deliverance. When I reject Christ, Sister Mary, and the Lord set me free 20 years ago from whatever he set me free from. I don't remember what happened 20 years ago, but that's just the number that came to my head. When He set me free 
for my addiction to tobacco. If I curse the one that set me free, if I curse the vessel of the man that laid his hands on me when I was healed, if I curse whatever that might be, I undo the key to my deliverance and I bind myself again. Jesus, I've seen people, God, just do wonderful things. And for the pride of life, I don't understand it, they turn around twice and say, well, I don't know about that church stuff, and I don't know about that God stuff, and I don't know about this and that and the other. And next thing you know, they're where they came from, and it is in vomit, and it is in the mire, and they love it. But when you come out through Jesus, when you come out through Jesus, Sister V. Hill, when you come out through Jesus... He puts your feet on the rock to stay. He gets you out of everything that has you bound. He gets you out of your financial problems. He gets you out of your misery. He gets you out of your mental problems. He gets you out of your fear, your depression, your pit, your snare. Everything He gets you out of. And when you hold on to His unchanging hand, when you commit your way unto Him and trust also in Him, He brings to pass all of the needs of your life. He brings to pass the help. He brings to pass the deliverance. He brings to pass the help of your children. He gives them knowledge and understanding and wisdom. He causes your kids to honor you. He causes you to walk a holy and upright life a way that you can never go without Him. He brings you through and you will never be ashamed again. Oh glory! Somebody stand to your feet. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah! Oh I love you Lord! I love you Lord! I love you Lord! I love you Jesus! I love you Jesus! Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. God's got a way. Jesus is going to bring you out today. Hallelujah. Devil, you're a liar. I will not be bound. <laughs>